Good afternoon. We are about to start tonight's uh, Finance Committee meeting. I want to make a few announcements before we begin. On um, tonight, we will implement new guidelines put in place by the Oklahoma State Legislature to allow remote participation in public meetings under the Open Meetings Act during the COVID-19 pandemic. pandemic. Uh, some council members are participating tonight by phone as well as some citizens. I'd like to uh, ask all those who are participating by phone to remember to mute when you're not speaking. And also, um, when you get a chance, when it comes time to make a motion, if you can acknowledge your name or when speaking, acknowledge your name uh, and wait to be recognized by the chair so we can keep up with those over the phone who are uh, making motions as well as speaking. And we ask that the community be patient with us as we adjust to this new technology. And so we will get into tonight's agendas. Uh, before we start, we will have our city clerk who will swear in our uh, new counselor, uh, Ms. Tracy McGee, at this time. We have our swearing in. Ready? I'm ready. Okay. If you'll repeat after me, I, Tracy McGee. I, Tracy McGee. Do hereby solemnly swear. Do hereby solemnly swear. That I will support, obey, and defend. I will support, obey, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Oklahoma. The Constitution of the State of Oklahoma. All laws of the State of Oklahoma. All laws of the State of Oklahoma. And the Charter and Ordinances. The Charter and Ordinances. Of the City of Muskogee, Oklahoma. Of the City of Muskogee, Oklahoma. And I will not knowingly receive and I would not knowingly receive directly or indirectly directly or indirectly any money or other valuable thing any money or any other valuable thing for the performance or non-performance for the performance of non-performance of any act or duty any act or duty pertaining to my office pertaining to my office other than the compensation allowed by law other than the compensation allowed by law I further swear I further swear that I will faithfully discharge my duties I will faithfully discharge my duties as a council member of Ward 4 as a council member of Ward 4 of the city of Muskogee of the city of Muskogee to the best of my ability to the best of my ability <laughs> Congratulations Thank you We would like to take this opportunity on behalf of all the counselors, all the citizens here in the city of Muskogee to welcome our new counselor, Ms. Tracy McGee, who will be representing Ward 4 for the next four years. Congratulations, and we look forward to working with you on this journey. Thank you. All right, with that being said, we're going to get into tonight's agendas. Uh, call to order the Finance Committee meeting for April the 6th, 2020. Item number one, please. Consider approval of Finance Committee minutes of March 16, 2020. We have the minutes before us. Do we have any additions or corrections to our minutes? This is Councillor Stout, and I move for approval. approval. Yeah. Jamie, the we, the have a, time. we have a Mayor Borston online who has made that motion. Jamie, if you could second that. This is Councillor Stout. I'll second the motion. The motion has been moved and seconded at this time. Any discussion? Roll call. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. All right. Item number one passes. Item number two, please. Consider approval of claims for all city departments March uh, 7, 2020 through March 27, 2020. Do we have a report from the purchasing committee? Yes, this is Councillor Stout. The purchasing committee did meet this afternoon and everything looks good and we move for approval. Second. I have a motion by Councillor Stout, second by Councillor Coleman. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Marlon Coleman? Yes. Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston? Yes. 
Item number two passes. Item number three, please. Consider approval to apply for the 2019 Project Safe Neighborhoods Grant funded through the District Attorney's Council in the amount of $70,726 for the Eastern District of the Office of the United States Attorney or take other necessary action. Acknowledging Chief Johnny Teehee. Chairman, members of the council, uh, what this is? <clears throat> Still on? There we go. Okay. Uh, this is a DOJ grant that we've put in for. Uh, what it'll do is give us money that will help us to pay for overtime for uh, violent crime activities. Uh, also gives us the ability, if we have, uh, to assist with code enforcement if we need to go into a certain area to help clean up. Uh, it's kind of just an all-inclusive type, uh, but basically $76,000. If we approve for it, that would be a, uh, available for overtime and things such as that for the police and for uh, some work with code enforcement as well. This is Councilor. Go ahead. This is Councilor Stout. Move for approval. Councilor Coleman, second. I have a motion by Councilor Stout, second by Councilor Coleman. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. Item number three passes. Item number four, please. Consider approval to receive donated funds for the city's an animal shelter sponsorship program for the months of December 2019 for $1,688, January 2020 for $1,241.44, and February 2020 for $2,251.11 for a total of $5,180.55 or take other necessary action. Mr. Manager. I do believe Mr. Garvin's on, uh, on the phone. Okay, I'm sorry. Mr. Garvin. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, the Animal Shelter Sponsorship Program received donations totaling $5,180.55 for the months of December, January, and February. Be glad to answer any questions. Otherwise, I'd recommend approval to receive the donated funds. Thank you, Mr. Garvin. Do we have a motion? Mr. Councilman Harvey Van, I'll make a motion to approve. This is Councilor Stout, Boyd's second. Second. <laughs> All right. I have a motion made by Councilor Ivy Van and a second by Councilor Stout. Any discussion? Roll call. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. Item number four passes, and with that item passing, that is our final item for the Finance Committee. I love the mayor has to call the order. We'll now call to order the Public Works Committee for April 6, 2020. Item number one. Consider approval of the nomination of Councilor Marlon Coleman as chair of the Public Works Committee, as well as discuss and take action to select a vice chair of the Public Works Committee or take other necessary action. Mayor Boydston. Yes, uh, I would like to move that Councilor Marlon Coleman uh, be named as chair of the Public Works Committee. And I think that other needs to be a separate part of this. We have Can a motion we... from Mayor Boydston on the floor. Yeah. Do we have a second? Second that a motion, Councilor Reed. We have a motion and a second. Okay. Do we have any other discussion by the committee? Roll call. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. And uh, then we can talk about the vice chair. Uh, is there anyone that wants to say that they have an interest in this? If not, I might mention Stephanie Morgan if she would be willing to take on this job. 
yes, I will. Okay, is that a second? I'll, this is Councilor Stout. I'll second that motion. Okay. We have a motion by Mayor Boydston, a second by Councilor Stout to nominate Stephanie Morgan as the Vice Chair of the Public Works Committee. Do we have any other discussion by the committee? Roll call. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. Item is approved. Item number two. Consider approval of Public Works Committee minutes of March 16, 2020. We've had time to review the minutes of the Public Works Committee. Do we have any adjustments or comments? Move Otherwise, we'll entertain a motion. Councilor Reed, move for approval. Second. Councilor McGee, second. It's been moved by Councilor Reed and seconded by Councilor McGee. Any other further discussion? Roll call. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. Item number three. Hold a public hearing and take action on Ordinance 4093A to rezone lots 8 and 9 in Block 2 of Griffith Heights Addition from R1 Single Family Residential to R5 Mobile Home Residential and if approved, authorize staff to revise the official zoning map of the city to reflect said change or take other necessary action. We will now open the public hearing. Ms. Callahan. Is Ms. Callahan on the line? Social distance, and I don't have. This request has been submitted by Nicholas and Diana Hyman, property owners. They are requesting to rezone 617 Arthur from the R1 single family residential zone to R5 mobile home residential zone. This is to allow for double wide manufactured homes to be placed on the property. This is the Atlas map that shows our current zonings. The red star indicates where the property is located, and there are several mobile homes located in the area. This is an aerial map that indicates where the property is located. It is west of South 6th Street. It's south of Kalamazoo and north of Hancock. The site is currently zoned R1 single family residential. It is currently vacant. It was a recently demolished home and the Simons have inherited the property. To the northeast is R1 single family residential and there is a single family home on the property. Northwest is R1, single family residential, and there is a single family home on the property. To the south is zone R5, mobile home residential. There is a single wide mobile home and vacant land. To the east is R1, single family residential. However, there is a single wide mobile home located on the property. To the southwest is R1, single family residential, and there is a single family home on the property. R5 mobile home residential zone would not have a negative impact on the area. It does comply with the future land use map and comprehensive plan and staff does recommend approval. We didn't have anyone who signed up to speak to this item so we'll close the public hearing and yield the floor to members of the committee for any comments or subsequent approval. This is Councilor Stout, move for approval. Board stood seconds. We have a motion by Councilor Stout, second by Mayor Boydston. Any further discussion? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, we recognize. Yes. Uh, next meeting we have, we need to make sure in place that our citizens can hear what uh, Ms. Callahan said, because I could barely could hear right from him right here. I think that volume needs to be up. I think it needs to be more uh, training and how to do this so our citizens can hear what we're talking about. I'm talking as loud as I can out of this mass. But I, I barely could hear. So I think something, uh, something needs to be done about that. Yes, sir. We I'll turn the floor to you, Mr. Chairman. I'll Thank turn you. the floor back over to you. Yes, sir, Mr. Van. We certainly will note that. Any other further discussion? Roll call. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. 
Ivory Van. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. Item number four. Consider the appointment of Michelle Shirley to the Historic Preservation Commission to serve a three-year term beginning April 1, 2020 and ending March 31, 2023, filling the expired term of Pete Carson or take other necessary action. Councilor Hibbs. Yes, this is Councilor Hibbs. Uh, this is my nomination and uh, I'm so happy and excited that she has agreed to do this. She wants to give back to her community and she's very active in the community. So I highly recommend her for this commission. We will take that in the form of a motion from Councilor Hibbs. Do we have a second? Councilor Reed, second that motion. It's been motioned by Councilor Hibbs and second by Councilor Reed. Do we have any other discussion from the committee? Roll call. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. We have no uh, one signed up to speak on the agenda on today. That will conclude the public works agenda. Okay, this is Mayor Boydston and I will call to meeting uh, the special call meeting of April 6th, 2020 of the Muskogee City Council. Roll call, please. Mayor Janie Boydston. Here. Derek Reed. Here. Marlon Coleman. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Jamie Stout. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Stephanie Morgan. Here. Tracy McGee. Here. We have a quorum. Item one, please. Consider approval of the nomination of Councilor Derek Reed as deputy mayor or take other necessary action. Yes, uh, this is Mayor Boydston and I uh, would like to make the motion that we approve Councilor Derek Reed as deputy mayor. Uh, he has seniority and I think he'll do a really good job. Councilor McGee second. Councilor Hibbs, I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Roll call. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. <clears throat> yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes, and the motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, item two. Receive report on the COVID-19 <clears throat> pandemic in Muskogee, and if necessary, take appropriate action to authorize and approve a subsequent amendment to resolution number 2801, declaring a local emergency, or city county joint resolution number 2803. Mr. Miller. Yes, thank you, Mayor and members of council. Uh, we have a, a brief report just with an update. We try to update you pretty much every day over the last few uh, weeks because things are changing rapidly. Uh, we're dealing with things we haven't dealt with before and doing the best we can to, to cope with it as a community uh, and as a city. Uh, that being said, I'm gonna ask our emergency manager to come forward, uh, Mr. Tyler, Evich and, uh, Tyler Evans, and he's gonna give us a brief update and then I'll follow him. Okay. Good afternoon, Ms. Mayor, members of council. As of 7 o'clock this morning, uh, from State Department of Health, we've had 1,327 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Oklahoma. Uh, we currently have 51 deaths. <clears throat> There's 20 positive cases in Muskogee County, and we have two deaths in Muskogee County. Uh, Saturday, we, we started the drive-through testing with the Muskogee County Health Department there at Honor Heights Park. Uh, we did 47 uh, tests that day. We also performed it today. Uh, we had 49 people that were tested today. Uh, we hope within the next 24 to 48 hours that we'll have those test results back to kind of see where we're standing. Um, the health department plans to receive more tests this week and they plan to do testing at the Muskogee County Health Department on Thursday, possibly Friday, just depending on how many tests they get in this week. Uh, they are leaving the tent up there at Honor Heights Park uh, for the month. They have the tent for a month rental. Uh, we hope uh, once the state sends us some more tests, we can do some more drive-through testing at Honor Heights Park to see where we're at. Uh, in order to be tested, uh, you have to schedule an appointment. Call the Muskogee County Health Department at 
uh, in order to be tested, you must be at least 16 years of age or older. It was 18. They moved that down to 16 years of age now. And you have to have a fever of 100.4 or greater, or a cough, or shortness of breath, or be in direct contact with a confirmed positive COVID-19 case. Uh, only one person per household will be tested, and only those with appointments should attend the testing. The tests are free. Uh, for more information on this, you can go to the Muskogee County Health Department's Facebook uh, page. They have information there. They have the phone number there, what you need to do, and the criteria that you have to meet to be tested. Uh, also, go to coronavirus.health.ok.gov. And also follow the City of Muskogee Emergency Management page, the Muskogee County Emergency Management page, and the uh, City of Muskogee uh, Facebook page. Mr. Miller's doing uh, nearly daily updates uh, concerning the COVID-19. Uh, that's all I have concerned for uh, my update. I know Mr. Miller has some more information he wants to touch on. Uh, are there any questions for me? Yes, Mr. Chairman, may I recognize? Oh, discounts, I'm sorry. Mayor, may I be recognized? Yes. <laughs> Ms. Devins, I uh, appreciate your report, mm -hmm. but I've been watching TV quite a bit and watching the many deaths around the world, the United States. And this is me, this is Ivory Van talking. I believe, and I'm proud of all the councilmen up there, they have masks on. I'm trying to prohibit this, the, you know, this pandemic we have. I believe every person that comes to that mic needs to have a mask on. I believe every person in here needs a mask on. If you heard the other day, the president said it. But he said he didn't want to wear it, but he said it would be just like China. When they were walking around, everybody had a mask on. So I think we need to look into that when we come to that mic and when we come in here, we need proper protection. We all need a mask on. By you being over emergency, especially over emergency management, you need a mask. Well, I'll take that in consideration. I appreciate it. I'll turn the floor back over. Yeah. I'll turn the floor back over to you, Ms. Mayor. Thank you very much. Um, I guess now we'll hear from Mr. Miller, unless uh, Mr. Evans, if you have any questions for him, you better speak now. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is Mike Miller. I, uh, I do want to address uh, Councilor Van. Yes, we do, uh, thanks to Mr. Evans and others, we do have an order in for masks for every employee. Uh, those CDC guidelines have changed and we are trying to follow those and we are absolutely doing that. We do anticipate getting those hopefully tomorrow and we'll certainly make sure employees all have those. Uh, Mayor, I, this may be a good time. I believe we have a citizen that's uh, signed up to speak and this may be a good time for that. Okay. Our, uh, Brian Fuller has uh, signed up, and if he would like to speak now, uh, we'll be happy to hear from him. Brian Fuller, 3200 South 55th Street East, Muskogee. I'm the president of IAFF Local 57. It's International Association of Firefighters. Right behind me here is the Vice President, Jared Havens. We're here tonight to, to speak concerned that since this has started, we really don't have any written protocols for the firemen. I've talked to Mr. Miller about that. He's talked to Chief Jones. They got out some protocols, but as Mr. Miller said, and Tyler said, everything changes daily. If they got to change the protocols and guidelines or special orders or whatever, it would help the firefighters with anxiety, depression, and everything else that everybody else is facing at home, they're facing it at the fire station. They have a lot of downtime. They're sitting around, some with masks on. Some have been exposed to the COVID-19. Some have been in contact where somebody's supposed to be quarantined. We've had a captain bring an RV trailer to a station because his kid was uh, quarantined. And while he's on duty, he stays in the trailer. That causes concern. It causes chaos is what it causes. The employees all need to know what's going on. Getting passed down verbally is not getting it done. We had a training officer make up some spray rig devices and Lowe's, Jason Cope out of Lowe's donated some uh, spray pots, a couple of them, and David Alexander, which is the captain on the fire department, owns a business that's donating all the air hose and fittings. We should have been doing this a couple of weeks ago. Tulsa Fires donating the hydro, 
and I may say this wrong, chlor chlorous acid to spray the rigs and stations down. Uh, we've got some more masks coming tomorrow that the union's getting, cloth mask on top of what Tyler's getting. So our firefighters, if they make a call, can come back, throw them in the washer and, and have a spare ready to go. But the phone calls that Jared and I are getting, we're getting them from union members. We're getting them, they're your employees. We need guidance. There's bulletin boards at every station. They can be changed. Assistant chiefs can take them around every day. But we need some, we need some guidance and we need some help. And that's what I'm up here asking tonight. I'm asking y'all, I'm asking Chief Jones, I'm asking whoever can help us to cut down on the anxiety, the depression, and everything else that our firefighters are facing. So that's, that's all I've got. Thank you. Ms. Mayor, may I, may I you speak? Thank you, Mr. Fuller. This is Mike Miller, may I speak, Ms. Mayor? Yes, go ahead. So I wanna thank Captain Fuller. He's been on the phone with me. Uh, a lot this weekend. Chief Jones has been on the phone a lot with me this weekend. I think I talked to them just about as much as I talked to my wife this weekend. <laughs> and we're trying to we're trying to do that. We we care about our employees, um, and it's a changing world, and we're trying to change quickly with it. Uh, Chief Jones and I talked again today about some updates to the protocols, and I think those are going to be forthcoming. Um, we we talked. I also sent him uh, an email about additional. Um, additional equipment for disinfecting above and beyond what we've already got, uh, something similar to what the, uh, the police department's looking at and what EMS has done. So those are things that we're, we're trying to address. We know it's important. We know the firefighters do a great job, uh, and they go out and, along with uh, EMS, are one of our first lines of defense um, in dealing with medical calls. And so I appreciate Captain Fuller and, and what he's bringing forward. Um, and I know Chief Jones cares about the firefighters as much as anybody, and I, and I do anticipate we'll have different protocols moving forward. Um, and I know I think it looks like Captain Fuller has would like to, to speak again as well, Ms. Mayor, and he does have additional time. I would like to clarify. Okay. I'm not here as Captain Fuller. I'm here as president of the union. Yes, sir. Uh, one thing that we run into in the past, and I want to make sure that's not happening, is always relying on donations or we're pinching pennies. The federal government has made this Oklahoma a state of emergency where the federal funds are coming. Whatever we can get, we shouldn't have to be calling to borrow, beg, or ask for donations. We ought to be able to get it and pay for it. And I just want to make sure that that money is not an issue. It's not. It shouldn't be. The council has approved us to use reserves, and it's not an issue. All right. Um, Mr. Evans can address the backlog of, of PPE. I understand that. We get <laughs> we're, that we're, international. we're pursuing every sort of thing we can pursue. We understand that. And money's not an issue. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, anything from uh, the council? Any comments or? I think all we need to do is receive this report. Ms. Is Mayor, we right? do have a little bit more on the report. Um, Tyler gave his, oh, and okay. I wanted, I wanted uh, Union President Fuller and Captain Fuller to have the opportunity to speak. I do have a few more things I'd like to discuss. Um, and then we do have also uh, ac potential action on um, the, re the joint resolution and the emergency declaration. Oh, okay. If, if I may have the floor. Go right ahead. All right. So the first thing I want to address on our update is is good news, as we as we can have good news in this time. It's that our police officer that tested positive um, a while back, he has recovered and he has returned to duty, and we're very grateful for that and very happy that that's happening. Tyler talked a little bit about the drive-through testing. We know that testing in Oklahoma is very poor. Uh, we know that tigers in New York are more likely to get tested than people in Oklahoma. And there's not a lot we can do about that. Our health department's doing the best they can. But if you see the news, you know that's true. Um, testing is the only way to scientifically know what's going on. But absent testing, we have to rely on what we can see in communities all over Oklahoma, the United States, and the world. COVID-19 is here. It is deadly. And we have to act like it. And the testing is only going to prove what we already know. And that's that it's here. And we have to look out for ourselves. And we have to look out for each other. 
So what does that look like? It means following CDC guidelines in the workplace. We've talked some about that. Uh, we're adapting our protocols in every department, including the fire department, to try and make that, that happen. We're, uh, we've ordered the masks that we hope to have for all of our employees that hopefully come in tomorrow. And we're also encouraging other businesses to do, uh, to do that. What you have uh, for your consideration are a couple of items today. The joint resolution passed by the county commissioner um, you know, that asks all businesses within the city limits to develop a plan for limiting the spread of COVID-19 and submitting it to the city. It talks about enforcing social distancing. It talks about uh, disinfection methods and, and methodology. It talks about clear signage to employees, permitting employees to work from home when possible, uh, complying with other advice. Um, it, it asks them to submit that plan to the city um, and to the county if they're in the county. We also have before you a, a, uh, an emergency declaration um, regarding uh, the the water bills and the, the utility bills as we've discussed previously uh, we'd like for you to consider that as well that utility services offered by the city uh, will not be cut off and no late fees are cut off fees through April 30th um, knowing that of course those the fee for service will continue through that time so we are trying to follow the CDC guidelines we are trying to implement these uh, through the city um, it, we're trying to see what else is going on in our community to, to work on this. Uh, we've got the hospital and the VA preparing as best they can, knowing what's coming, uh, knowing that it's going to get worse before it gets better, uh, treating the patients that they have and knowing that there's, there's not a cure, that they can only help with the symptoms. Um, we're doing as a city, we're closing down parks, everything but the open spaces. Um, people might need their fresh air, but they don't need to be doing it and congregating in public. They don't need to be playing on the playgrounds. Um, the governor continued his order for non-essential businesses to be closed, and our joint resolution echoes that through April 30th. But we know that causes financial distress. Uh, we know that uh, for thousands of people, that causes unemployment to be way up, and hotel occupancy is way down. Bankers worked all weekend trying to help our citizens through the SBA process to try and keep their small businesses afloat and for paychecks to keep coming. Um, we know that the over unemployment system in our state and others is being overwhelmed by unprecedented numbers of people uh, applying for unemployment. Retail development's grinding to a halt. We know at least one business that was going to come here to Muskogee that's put that on hold. And that affects the city as we look forward. Our budget projections have changed greatly. We might need to look at cuts in almost every area if there's a long-term drop in sales tax. And regardless, we're going to have to have a bare bones budget proposal from staff that comes to you at the appropriate time. Many of the ideas and initiatives for new programs uh, may need to wait until we have a better understanding of what the future holds. Uh, we're already going to postpone our annual council retreat until after uh, July 1, which is the start of our new fiscal year. We are ordering new equipment for police and fire and our first responders uh, that's necessary today, but we didn't think of it in our previous budgets and, and very few cities did. What we know is when we look at all this, uh, this trouble is that we're not going to get any help. Uh, when we look at the federal stimulus package and included money for large communities like Tulsa and Oklahoma City, but not for small cities like Muskogee. And so uh, the state received funding as well, and they may be able to share it, and we're working closely with our elected representatives at the state level. Uh, but that comes after the state has paid their COVID-19 expenses. They may be able to share it with cities like Muskogee. And that helps make my point. Muskogee, it looks like we're going to have to do what we always do, and that's take care of ourselves. If we're waiting on the federal government for help, that help may never come. And so I know I've talked a lot about the economics of this, but we understand that first and foremost, this is a health crisis. People are hurting and suffering, and more will. And the only way that we know to stop this is to look out for each other. So a special thanks to all the healthcare workers uh, who haven't had a day off in a while and may not for the foreseeable future, and they aren't the only ones. I know there's police officers. I'm looking at you, Deputy Chief Farmer. I know that there's emergency manager, Tyler, uh, members of city management. Uh, they don't even get a few hours off between work duty dealing with this because the regular job keeps going. Uh, but there's this emergency that is nonstop. The virus doesn't take a day off, and our people aren't either. Uh, and none of it works if we don't look out for each other. So please, you know, don't leave your home unless absolutely necessary. 
stay away from each other. And that looks different to everyone. I know for my friends, the Lindsays, that meant their daughter's 18th birthday party was driving by and saying hi. Not how anybody wants to celebrate their 18th birthday. I know for me and my parents, that means that we do the same thing. We have a wave and a phone call instead of a hug. That's hard. That's hard. But that's where we are. It's not easy. But we live in community, and we can get this through this together if we stay apart. So as we go through all this, I ask you please, uh, council members and the public, please be patient with your team. This is new territory for everyone. We're adapting as quickly as we can. But you need to be proud of your staff. You need to be proud of your first responders uh, and your team. And on behalf of that team, I want to thank the mayor and the city council who have taken strong leadership in uncertain times to guide us. So, Mayor, I know you're on the phone, but I'm talking to you. And, Council, I want to look at okay. each one of you. I wasn't hearing real good, but... Uh. Well, Mayor, I, forgive me if I'm mumbling, Mayor, but I'm trying to thank you for the strong leadership you guys have provided. Uh, we do suggest amending the emergency declaration as presented and the joint resolution as amended. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. I know Mr. Tucker has a lot of information Are you ready to as take well. Over? Question. So, Mayor, um, we, we suggest amending both the emergency declaration as presented and the joint resolution as amended, um, and I'm happy to answer questions, and Mr. Tucker is happy, uh, certainly, as well. Ms. Mayor, may I be recognized? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, Mr. Miller, uh, I'll commend you, because we talked about this a week or so ago about the parks. I'm glad to see you about the parks. Because I know you said we've got a stay-at-home order, but I'm the type of person I want to see when people are out in the parks, how bad it was, and I brought it to your attention. And you did take care of it. I appreciate you. You took the basketball goals down. You closed the fencing. You put fencing around the playground area. You done all that. Uh, covered up the drinking fountain. You shut down the bathrooms. But I do have a few more concerns with the park. <coughs> what, number one is like, at, well, I'll, I'll just go ahead and mention it. The Robinson Park, I think that exercise uh, station we have down there, that needs to be fenced. The gazebos in these parks where people gather, they have their little birthday parties and stuff like that, that needs to be fenced. It shouldn't be anybody. Only things should be going on in the park, even the skate park, it, gets, it still gets jammed up down there. That should be some attention to that. Only ones should be in the park is people on the jogging trail and six, uh, six foot apart. Those are some concerns that I've been around looking at the parks and that I've seen. But the rest of it, I think you've done a very good job. I commend the parks department, even the Martin Luther King Center. They went over there and done the playground, took the basketball goals down over there. They didn't have to do that, but they did. So I appreciate, I just want to appreciate, you know, all your help. And Roy, your help especially also, and yeah. the council, everybody. But I just thought I'd bring those few things to your attention because that's what I see. So I'll turn the floor back over to you, Ms. Mayor. Thank you very much. Mayor, and, uh, Mayor Derek Reed, may I be acknowledged, please? Yes, go right ahead. Mr. Miller, uh, sentiments, uh, just as Ivory Van and others, you know, we are definitely proud of those who are on the front line for our city all essential workers all throughout the city. My question uh, is to uh, get some more elaboration on the statement that you made about our retreat not being held until July. I was kind of concerned about uh, how we would proceed, you know, with the, the budget year closing. Well, absolutely. We'll, we'll still go through our budget process and we'll still have all the, all the hearings with the council. Um, absolutely. The, the timing, give the, the retreat is a, a planning session. It's hard for us to think of how to plan five years out right now sure. when we don't know what's going to happen next week. And so it's hard to project uh, uh, all those priorities. And so I want to give us a little breathing room. The budget, of course, will come to the council. The council uh, will uh, prioritize, as always, um, what goes in and what goes out. We've just, um, given the nature of how things are right now, it's going to be tough to do uh, that retreat as planned um, uh, with all the uncertainty that we have. Okay, I understand the retreat part, but what process will we go through as counselors as far as to prepare that budget? I know, you know, it's kind of <laughs> rocky, you know, we got a rough couple of weeks ahead of us. But. Yes. 
So uh, our process uh, that we usually follow and we'll try and continue to follow this year is the, the staff has submitted budgets, uh, draft budgets to me. I review those. Uh, then I prepare um, a, a rough draft that, uh, that we communicate with you guys and you give feedback. And then we have, end up having uh, two budget hearings. Um, and the, the first budget hearing, you guys uh, ha are, are able to see that in a public forum and give feedback, and then we can modify it as, as needed. And then we'll have a second budget hearing to adopt or further modify, depending on the time. So the, the leadership that you guys provide through, through the budget process will still be there. Um, we just likely will, will not be able to have um, uh, the, and we, we talked about having a much different retreat this year than we've had in past years because we have so many uh, that are new to the council and allowing the strategic planning to take a part. And I think that's important. I don't think it's going to fit. Um, if, we, if we could all get together in the same room for hours and hours on end, <laughs> like we usually do, and do the retreat and interact well, I think it would be a great opportunity. And if we knew uh, what the, our funding certainty um, looked like, uh, that we, it would help us in the budget process too. But both of those things being lacking, I think it's better to have the retreat um, f for that reason. And then secondly, we'll have a new mayor in, in, uh, in July as well. And I think it'd be good for the, the new mayor to participate in the planning process if we're developing a five-year plan. Ms. Mayor, I have one more question for the city manager. This is Councilman Ivory Vian. Oh. All right, go right ahead. <laughs> Mr. Miller, one uh, point I forgot, I didn't mention. Also got a concern about the porta potties. We shut the bathrooms, the main bathrooms down, but we hadn't shut the porta potties down. It's, I mean, are we going to do that? We are advising all our citizens that go to the park to uh, go before you go, is the phrase that, that, <laughs> that I've heard used. Um, we're, we, are, uh, we have not removed the, the porta potties, uh, and that's not necessarily in the plan. Um, but in general, our facilities are, are closed except for the trails, as you mentioned. So that's, uh, that's going to continue to be the case. Well, what I'd recommend, Mr. Miller, we can advise all day long, but they don't listen. We need to do it, get out there and close them down. But if we got to put fencing across it, put fencing across it. And you know I'm telling you the truth up here. They do not listen. That's why we need to take all these basketball goals and do all these things in the park, because they do not listen. They think this thing's a game, but it's not. So that's the last thing I want to mention to you. I'll turn the floor back over to you, Ms. Mayor. Thank you very much. And um, I, our... Item two says that if necessary, we need to take an action of, on a amendment to resolution number 2801 or number 2803. And I wanted to ask the city attorney, do we need to do anything about that or are we finished with item two? No, we're not finished yet. We've still got a little ways to go. Um, and if uh, I could have the floor mayor, I can go over uh, the proposed First Amendment Resolution 2803 relating to the joint resolution. Good. Well, go right ahead. All right. Thank you. Uh, mayor, members of the council, um, wanted to give you a brief report on the meeting from the uh, City County Joint Task Force. Uh, as you all know, uh, the task force was created by official act of both the City Council and the Board of County Commissioners. And so uh, our first act was to make a recommendation which you all uh, took under advisement and enacted on March 25th. And what that resolution did, as the city manager alluded to, was direct citizens to stay home. Uh, that is the safest way to stop the spread of the coronavirus. We also um, required businesses who were deemed essential under the governor's order to come up with a mitigation plan. And um, that was our first step. And so the council passed that and the uh, uh, Board of County Commissioners passed that in a joint meeting. And so um, the task force continued to meet and we have met uh, twice last week and brought, bring, bring forth to you uh, additional recommendations. Uh, based upon how things are changing and um, 
basically what um, we're learning from uh, sources such as the CDC, uh, the orders that are continually changing from the governor's office, and what our best estimate is on how to best stop the spread. And so uh, the recommendation that I bring to you from the task force is to, um, as I mentioned, we directed the uh, essential businesses to prepare a plan. Uh, we didn't talk about enforcement, and we also didn't talk about how they would uh, be required to submit that plan. So in the proposed resolution, uh, what it does is a couple of things. One, it changes references to Governor Stitt's Fourth Amendment order, amended order to his eighth to correct all those references there. It also changes um, that we require businesses to submit the plans to the city or the county, uh, all their mitigation plans, as well as a plan to enforce those mitigation plans. Because as many people have commented on social media, uh, a business may have a uh, social distancing plan by the register where they'll have a six foot space marked between people, but then the employees will allow everyone to gather up. And so enforcement of that social distancing is as important as having a plan. And so um, we're requiring those businesses to have that plan, to enforce it, and to submit a copy to us so that we know that they are doing it. We have created a separate uh, email address called compliance uh, at muskogeeonline.org where all of those plans can be submitted electronically. Uh, additionally, for those businesses that are smaller and maybe don't have the resources or capability to create a mitigation plan, we've included a business questionnaire on the, uh, as Exhibit A to the resolution. And so if any business were to fill out that questionnaire, it effectively will be the basic mitigation plan. And so uh, we wanted to create a helpful guide for some of our smaller businesses who lacked resources to be able to come up with something. Because when you say, as we have said, look at the CDC guidelines, look at the state health department guidelines. There are hundreds of pages of guidelines, because I went through them. And there are five pages of guidance documents with 10 uh, different interim guidances on each page, so 50 documents on the CDC website related to businesses. And so if you tell a small business, come up with a plan, here are the resources, it's going to be next July before anybody gets around to doing that. And so that's what our point in creating this business questionnaire was intending to do. We also um, incorporated uh, web links where they could create printable posters that are from the CDC and the State Health Department to advise people about social distancing, sneezing and coughing etiquette, and those kind of things. So those are all referenced and intended to be incorporated into the plans that will be submitted to the city. Now, the county adopted this plan this morning, and so uh, their uh, businesses that are located within the county will submit their plans to a different uh, email address. That's bocc at readymuskogee.org. Uh, additionally, uh, we did amend the resolution to reference the change in the governor's order closing non-essential businesses from uh, April 16th to April 30th, so that is reflected. Uh, additionally, the um, requirements to submit the uh, plan, the mitigation plan, will apply to non-essential businesses after April 30th once the governor's uh, order that they be closed is lifted. And so those non-essential businesses must submit a uh, mitigation plan prior to opening. Okay, um, so we've also included an enforcement mechanism for us within the resolution. And so it can be enforced in a couple of ways. First, it's going to be education. Uh, businesses who do not comply by the April 10th deadline, we will reach out to either in person or on the telephone, depending on how much success we have with the telephone option first. Um, we'll find out why they're not complying. Do they need additional help or resources? Um, were they aware that we've made this requirement? And so education will be our first line of defense. Secondly, uh, we will have the potential to issue citations for those businesses who simply refuse to comply or refuse to enforce their own uh, mandates. Third, for those businesses who are licensed by the city, um, we have the potential to do a revocation hearing to revoke their business licenses. Now, the reason why we've included citations as well as revocation of business licenses is because 
of the approximate 1,500 businesses that we have in Muskogee, only about probably 300 of them are licensed by the city. So we have a lot of them that are not licensed that we need to have some other enforcement mechanism in. We're not intending to, intended to, intending to be heavy-handed with this. We're simply trying to get everyone to comply so that we stop the spread of COVID-19 and our, our numbers stay very close to where they are. We have been fortunate. We have not seen the exponential growth. That could be because of testing. Our numbers could change when the um, health departments drive through testing when those results come out. And so we need to plan for doing that. And so we think this is the best result in, in, in uh, uh, reaching that mitigation. Now, a lot of questions have come up. Why have, not, why have we not implemented a uh, mandatory stay at home? where we start issuing citations for folks who are not out uh, conducting essential business. Why do we not consider uh, handling um, or implementing curfews, 10 o'clock or something like that? Well, a couple of reasons. One, the definition of what an essential business is is so broad that it's nearly impossible to enforce a stay-at-home order with the list of essential businesses being as broad as it is without having the uh, police department stop every car that drives through and says, why are you here? Are you working for an essential business? Let me see your papers. And I don't think that's in anything that anybody wants to, to see happen. Um, and so that's reason number one. The list is so broad, it's very impossible to enforce. Secondly, um, we wanted to be involved with the county, Board of County Commissioners with this joint resolution. We have much broader enforcement authority to create these types of orders than the county does. Their authority is relying upon what the, governor, what the governor's order says. They can enforce his order, but they cannot go beyond that. And so if we had an order locking down the city or imposing a curfew, but yet half a mile outside of the city limits, you can leave and do whatever you want to, that's uh, very similar to the uh, 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 statement or um, metaphor that I'm hearing about um, what happens when you've got a pool of water and uh, uh, other states who are locking down, but then other states aren't. You just have frequent travel. And so if we lock the city down and the county's not able to lock down, it doesn't really have any effect. And so that's why we thought this is the best alternative and so we've got the enforcement mechanisms. This is what the task force is recommending. As I said, the commissioners approved it this morning. So uh, I did provide uh, a red line copy to you all via email earlier. Uh, I passed it out to those of you who are here. It is also available for the citizens at home on our website. If they go to cityofmuskogee.com, uh, go to the government tab, drop down to City Council and then Agendas and Minutes and then look for Special City Council of 4-620. Uh, this amended resolution as well as the red line and the attached business questionnaire is in that packet. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. But I, on behalf of the task force, do recommend approval. Madam Mayor, can, may I have the floor? This is Councilor Stout. Yes, go right ahead. Roy, I, one thing that we've kind of been seeing on Facebook, too, is they're asking some of the non-essential businesses that are supposed to be closed, I think, are still being open. What's our, well, what would be our process there? We will, same thing, we will educate, we will go, we will reach out to the businesses who are open yet are not in compliance. Um, and then if they fail to comply, we have incorporated that provision in our resolution. And so we can enforce that similar to by citation. But as I know, we reached out to at least one business who is a business who was non-essential, um, but was operating and they have closed down. So. Thank you. Yep. I'll turn the floor back over to you, Mayor. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Yes, ma'am. Um, Council McGee like to ask a question. Um, how are we ahead. simulating the information to the businesses? 
Um, we have pulled a, it's a great question. I'm glad you asked it. I should have mentioned it earlier. Uh, we pulled a copy of all of the commercial accounts um, within the city. Uh, we are going through those, identifying businesses uh, that operate within the city. We are reaching out to them, getting a phone number um, and email, and sending them a copy of this, and that'll be done tomorrow. Uh, the city manager has assigned two additional staff people um, to help with that, so hopefully we'll get everything disseminated very quickly as well as doing a press release to help as well. Okay, because you said April 10th and that day is coming up on us. So. Friday, yes. Okay. Other questions? Mr. Tucker, can you tell us what an appropriate motion would be? Yes, an appropriate motion, Mayor, would be to approve the first amended resolution number 2803 <laughs> as discussed. This is Councilor Stout, so moved. Councilor Reed, I'll second that motion. All right, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Marlon Coleman? Yes. Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston? Yes, and the motion carries. Item three, please. Consider uh, where Mayor, if I, if I may, we did have two action items on, uh, on, on item two, if we can stay on item two for just a moment longer. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm asleep at the wheel, I guess. I guess we need someone to declare emergent, an emergency. Is that what you mean? Uh, I'll let Mr. Tucker explain. We, we were going to amend the, uh, the declaration of emergency to address the, the water issue. Actually, I think Councillor Coleman had uh, some ideas on that. Um, oh, like. okay. Let me answer the mayor's well, question. Well, Mr. Tucker. Uh, Mayor, um, let me answer that question first. Um, we do not need to declare an emergency because as a resolution, it is effective upon affirmative vote. So uh, oh, now okay. that you all have voted on it, it is effective now. But we do have a, uh, our original declaration of emergency, which is an, uh, an in tandem uh, resolution, which is not replaced or superseded by the joint resolution. Um, and Manager Miller had uh, recommended that we amend that resolution to incorporate the extension on the water and utility cutoffs. And so um, oh, okay. that uh, amended resolution is also, uh, was also emailed out to everyone and is also available uh, at the same website um, and the same meeting that I did address earlier. So Mike, I didn't know if you or Councilor Coleman wanted to talk about the, the rationale with that. This is Councilor Coleman, Mayor and Council. The rationale behind us needing to amend the motion or the platform that we had implemented on the water cutoffs was that when we first put that item in place, it was for 30 days, and the 30 days would be effective April 23rd, whereas it's now appropriate that that date be April 30th because of the rollovers and being certain that we have the proper dates within the resolution to be certain that it's an actual uh, fully, it's a full 30 days to be certain that we are not cutting water off at this time. That will give staff the opportunity under the original motion to provide us of an update on that impact uh, as well as give us the time to look at where we are in terms of the economy for our residents to be certain that they are in a situation where that where they can still survive because water is essential during the COVID-19 spread, and we want to be certain that people have ample opportunity uh, to be able to do what they need to do to contain the spread. And so uh, with that, uh, Mr. Miller, Mr. Tucker, my motion on that item uh, would be that we extend what we had already done on the water cutoffs from instead of it being April 23rd to it being April 30th so that we can be uh, in sync with what we're trying to accomplish in terms of providing water services to our residents. And before you officially make that motion, what I would what I would suggest is that we have incorporated that language into a second amended resolution 2801. Okay. Specifically, we have a provision which says that utility services offered by the city, such as water, stormwater, sewer, and garbage, shall be maintained for all customers with no cutoffs, late fees, uh, or cutoff fees through April 30th. Provided, however, that fees for said 
service shall still accrue and be the responsibility of the utility customer. And then, so that is added into the second amended resolution 2801. Then that will be my motion as we move forward with the amendments uh, and others with 2801. This is Councilor Stout. I second. Okay, Mr. City Attorney, is that all we need to do other than vote? That's all you need to do other than vote. Mayor, okay, is there any further discussion from anybody? Mayor, this is uh, Mike Miller. I would, after the vote, I would like to have the floor for just a brief moment before we move on to number three. Okay. Well, let's let's Ms. have the roll call. Ms. Then. Mayor, have you recognized? Oh wait. Who are you? Councilman Ivory Van. Yes. Go right ahead. On this slide. So all we're doing is extending the days for the cutoff. Is that what we're doing? Right. Just extending it out. What yes. Is a month? Because I think it was uh, originally the what, 15th, 16th, 23rd. The 23rd. This allows it's us now going to be April 30th. This allows us to to see all billing cycles through and then um, present an analysis as requested from the last council meeting. Okay. I was just I was just curious because I didn't know if we extended it. You know. Another month for to give them, you know, waiving the fees and stuff. Because I hope and pray that we're not enabling these people that don't really generally pay their water bill. I hope we're not in, enabling them, you know, taking advantage of us. And I want to see everybody's water on, but it's really it's people out there that really work the system, and I just hate to see that happen. So. Well, this this amended resolution does. Pardon me. This is Mike Miller. It, it does make that uh, clear that the fees and se for services shall continue to accrue and be the responsibility. So that people still need to, to pay their water. They just won't have late fees and cutoff fees if they can't. Okay. Turn the floor back over you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. And then, are we ready for the motion? Roll call. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Marlon Coleman? Yes. Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston? Yes, and the motion carries. And Mr. Miller, did you want to make another statement? Yes, just very briefly, I'd be remiss to, to not mention Muskogee County EMS, and Trish German is here. I don't know if she would like to, to add anything to what we've already said. Uh, Muskogee County EMS has been a great leader um, in helping the city. Uh, they provided us with additional uh, personal protective gear and masks. Uh, they've been a great partner, and we really, truly thank uh, Muskogee County EMS. And Trish, is there anything that you'd like to add or, or, or tell the council? First of all, okay, I want to say thank you to the council, oh. um, and uh, we're out there doing the best we can. You know, we're trying to get the PPE out to um, the first responders, police, fire. Um, I know it's hard to get the PPE in. You know, we're doing what we can to support our city. Our medics are working really hard. They're working 24-hour shifts, and you know, they're working just really super hard. And you just can't ask for a better group of people. Thank you for what you do. Mr. Mayor, I recognize. They are all. Go ahead. What's her name? It's Trish German. Hmm. Uh, Councilor Van, it's Trish German with. Trish, um, okay. Yes. Did you, Did you have a question? Yes, well, not really a question. Obviously, that a concern that I brought up last time at the meeting. Yes. Did you get that straightened out? We did talk about um, the, the gatherings. Um, trying to stay six feet apart and they're doing the best they can you got to understand though that sometimes you know they're working those 24-hour shifts those 48-hour shifts and sometimes before the restaurants were even closed they may only get one chance to actually sit down and eat a lot of times when they're out a lot of times they don't have time to just grab their food and get back to the station 
to eat, maybe even in their truck. They're not allowed to eat in the back of their truck. It's a state guideline. So sometimes when they're sitting in a public restaurant, that might be the only time they actually get to sit down and eat in that 24-hour shift. My problem was that we'd already put this in place and they were still in there sitting down and eating with the regular people. Didn't have no, you know, just not even six foot apart. But, you know, I just, I just wanted to make sure that you did tell them what they, that they were doing was wrong. Yes, it was addressed. And I, I want to also say something to you. I applaud you tonight because you got that mask on, you standing up there at that mic. So that, that tells me that you, you are prepared and you see the, the importance of this. So I'd like to, like to give you a, I didn't mean to sound hateful last time you were up here or cruel, but I was, that's just what I seen with my own eyes and I just, it just shocked me. But I want to give you my blessing and I'm glad you're doing the job you're doing for our city and I appreciate that. I just want you to know that. Well, I appreciate your apology. Um, I have another statement. Our medics, you know, they, they deal with people daily, mm -hmm. daily. They deal with infection before this whole COVID thing came apart, came out. They deal with infection and we deal with infection on a daily basis. So we know what's out there. We know how to handle um, situations and we know how to handle you know, disease and how to control you know, our part, washing our hands, wearing our masks, doing what we're supposed to do. Well, I appreciate your service. Thank you. Turn the floor back over you, Ms. Mayor. Madam Mayor, this is Councillor. This is Councillor Stout. May I have the floor? Yes, go ahead. I just kind of want to ditto what everybody else has kind of mentioned tonight and just thank all of our first responders from the fire department to the police department to our EMS to all the health care workers. Thank you guys for being on the front lines and taking care of our community. I turn the floor back over to you, Madam Mayor. That was well said, and I think we all join in that sentiment. Uh, if there's nothing further, we'll go to item three. Consider approval of resolution number 2805, authorizing the calling and holding of an election in the city of Muskogee, state of Oklahoma, to be held on June 30, 2020, for the purpose of approval or rejection of the municipal question proposed by initiative petition number 100-1119, pertaining to revocation of the city charter and adoption of the statutory strong mayor council form of government, or take other necessary action. Mr. Tucker. Mayor, members of the council, um, uh, most of you were aware that this was going to come before you. Um, we had uh, back in October 31st, 2019, an initiative petition that was filed with the clerk's office. Uh, the petition sought to uh, revoke the charter of the city of Muskogee and uh, institute the statutory strong mayor council form of government. Uh, that petition, after it was filed, was circulated, and 926 unverified signatures were submitted to the clerk's office for verification. Um, the city clerk exercised her statutory duty and uh, was very diligent in uh, verifying those signatures. And once she was finished, she verified that there were 765 valid and verified signatures. This number represented in excess of the minimum 25% of uh, signatures representing the number of votes cast in the last general election uh, that had to be met for the uh, question posed by the initiative petition to be placed on the ballot. Um, the notice of the filing and the validity of the uh, proposal was uh, filed in, excuse me, was uh, published in the newspaper, giving anyone uh, within the city an opportunity to object to the clerk's count um, or to the uh, protest or to file a protest to the petition. Uh, ten days had passed and there was no petition that had been filed. So as a result, uh, the proposers have met their statutory and constitutional obligation to have that question put on the ballot. Uh, the next election, next available election is June 30th. And so we have coordinated with the uh, uh, chairman of, excuse me, the secretary of the uh, county election board um, and 
my, my conversation with him was uh, initially, do we actually need an action from the council since the proposer has met all of the statutory requirements. He reached out to the state election board and they determined that a resolution calling for the election was required by the city council. Now, um, in exercising your duty here tonight to um, uh, approve this resolution calling for the election, you're not making any decisions or recommendations based upon whether you're for or against the proposition. Instead, what you're doing is recognizing that uh, the proposer of the initiative petition has met all the statutory qualifications and is entitled by statute and provisions within the state constitution to have that placed on the ballot. And so that resolution is here for you tonight. Um, if it is approved, um, the ballot question that will be presented to the voters at, on June 30th will be only one proposition. Shall City of Muskogee revoke the charter under which it is now operating and adopt and be governed under the statutory strong mayor council form of government as provided by the laws of Oklahoma? That ballot language was not necessarily drafted uh, by us, but was provided in the statute. So the statute provides if a municipality wishes to revoke its charter and be governed under another form of government, there's magic language that is in the statute that has to be within that question. And so that is representative of what the proposition is. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. This is Councilor Stout. I move for approval. All right. Council McGee second. We have a motion. Who was that? Council McGee second. OK. Uh, is there any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes, and the motion carries. Item four. Discuss and take action on selecting a new member for the purchasing committee. Uh, this is my uh, matter, and uh, uh, Wayne Johnson was on the purchasing committee, and now that he is not no longer there, we need to have another uh, member, and I would like to suggest Derek Reed. Anyone have anything else to say? Councilor, um, Mayor, this is Councilor Stout. I second that motion. Okay, any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Marlon Coleman? Yes. Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston? Yes, and the motion carries. That's the last item on our agenda, but before we leave, I would like to say a couple of things. One is to uh, welcome our new council member, Tracy McGee. We look forward to working with you uh, in these difficult times, and even when it, the going gets better. And then I would just like to encourage everybody to pay close attention to the CDC guidelines. That's one thing we can all do, and the more we do it, the quicker we can beat this scourge that is upon us. And it may not be pleasant, but we can uh, grit our teeth and do what we have to for a little while so that we don't have to go through the other uh, instances like we see them in, on television in other uh, places where they didn't get such a good warning time as we do. The better we do, the quicker we'll be through with this. So I would like to encourage everybody to just do the very best you can and stay safe and be kind to each other. Good night and we are adjourned.